Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to discuss the digital interface used to control the computer powered by our inverter. This interface must allow for a clean shutdown of the computer system being powered. The shutdown command is a standard part of the USB HID protocol, and that protocol provides universal cross-platform support. No additional drivers needed. The process is started by sending a status packet to the host computer with the shutdown imminent flag set. At this point, the computer should perform its shutdown routine and cleanly end all read and write operations to the disk. This prevents corrupted file systems and data loss. Sounds great, right? Let's design this feature into our processor. Should be easy. Well, this feature has a few moving parts. I've implemented USB interfaces and hardware before, and that's actually not very difficult. Many microcontrollers have USB transceivers built in. Now all you have to do is route the 90 ohm differential pair to one of the standard USB connectors, add some ESD protection, and the rest is up to software. That's where things get both easier and more difficult for us. In theory, one could just take the specification drawn up by the USB implementers forum, then define the fields required in the various collections and send periodic status reports to the computer. But since this is the first time I have ever looked into the software implementation of a standard USB device, there's a lot of new information to absorb, at least for me, and it can be a little overwhelming. I'm pretty far out of my wheelhouse on this one. The Cypress tool for software development, PSOC Creator, does an absolutely marvelous job of assisting in the creation of standard USB device classes, creating custom reports, etc. I find that the fault of the system is my lack of understanding on how USB HID reports should be structured. Let me start with an example. I have a USB usage table document from USB.org, and this describes the various fields available for power devices, as shown here. This document explains that one can use the class to report AC voltage, current, frequency, DC voltages, DC current, power, temperature, battery capacity, and more! These reports provide a host computer with a lot of general information about what's going on inside the UPS. The standard also allows for sharing percent load, error conditions, shutdown requested, and shutdown imminent flags. Whether we're in a battery-backed mode or standard mode, runtime remaining, there is a boatload of information that we can share with Windows, Linux, and Mac computers so that these computers can make an informed decision on whether or not they want to power down and when they want to power down. This is exactly what we need to meet our requirements surrounding automatic shutdown and more. Fantastic! Digging deeper into PSOC Creator, we started with an example that enumerates as a USB HID mouse. Then this mouse will send reports periodically to the host computer. The program that's given as the example ultimately moves the cursor back and forth and just does that forever. They set this up through devices, class descriptors, endpoint descriptors, and ultimately a HID report description. That last bit's where things get hairy for me. Now I've got a good start. I found where to declare that we are a power device. I then added on that we are a power device that is a UPS. Great start. Now it comes down to organizing the rest of that report with fields that we'd like to implement. Now there's a lot of options that range from what we'd expect, like capacity, runtime remaining, and shutdown imminent, but there's also a lot of fields that I didn't expect, like report size, report count, logical maximum, logical minimum. I don't know enough about the USB protocol to be sure about how to group those collections and usages and organize them in a HID report so that Windows sees what it expects to see from this power device. From my experience, the situation demands research and organized problem-solving strategies, rather than guessing and floundering. I need some basic information about HID report descriptors, such as whether or not the order that usages and collections appear is important, and how to structure variables in my software to correctly match the field size declared in this HID descriptor. I think that diving deeper into the Cypress mouse example, comparing that with the USB specification for the USB HID mouse devices, I think that will provide a lot of insight into what's going on here. In the Cypress example, they define some arrays of values that eventually make it to the computer, and that makes a lot of sense. However, our HID report looks very different from the one listed in their example, so direct mapping one-to-one -one isn't very easy. I believe that implementing the features we require will demand that I gain a fundamental understanding of USB HID reports and the way that those need to be structured for Windows to understand them. I certainly intend to do so, but my time is stretched pretty thin right now. 
I've sunk more hours into this than I care to admit, but in doing so, I've gotten close enough to a USB implementation to be confident that our hardware completely and fully supports the protocols required to meet our requirements. That's important. Because our software can change and develop down the road, but our hardware will be pretty much fixed. Once we load the full and complete HID descriptor into the Cypress hardware abstraction tool, build a structure in our software to load it with data and send reports periodically, I'm confident that this is going to work great. For now, we need to put this effort on pause to focus on getting our new hardware finished, focus on core feature implementation and software. We have a long laundry list of features to implement in both the PSOC 4200M project and the PSOC 5LP project, including but not limited to control system updates, fault detection, cooling fan algorithm updates, power on soft start, processor handshaking, and more than 20 other software items. The features just listed will be absolutely necessary to get our next prototype board powered on, and that's due to the safety mechanisms and redundancies that we implemented in this next board. We saw how well circumventing the safety features went for our last board, so I'd really rather not kill more hardware due to the absence of software current limiting. Since USB isn't one of those critically required features, it's just going to need to wait until the higher priority work can be finished. If you have some experience with USB and can lend a hand by pointing us in the direction of some good reference material, please let us know. We're specifically looking for information about how to structure USB report descriptors for HID devices. If you've got some links, they could really speed up our work, and I would appreciate it a lot. So, we didn't get our prototype completely working, but we do have enough structure in place to be confident that our hardware and software selections have the right features. This is good enough for now because it provides the confidence that we need to send our hardware design to the PCB Fab House and then the PCBA Assembly Factory. The hardware will be pretty much fixed after we get this board manufactured, but the software has plenty of time to mature. Stick around for our future videos where we'll finish recapturing the design, planning for any hooks that we might need to get software features implemented, and walk through packaging our design for automated manufacturing. I think that this inverter will be great, and I'm starting to get excited. If you think so too, let us know by hitting the like button on this video, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!